Hi, welcome to The Reaches, Caring for Family Treasures. Today we're going to talk a little bit about paper and photographs. Uh, I'm Chris Bowles, I'm the Curator of Historical Collections at The Reach. Good morning. <laughs> it's Chris from the, uh, Chris Bowles from The Reach Gallery Museum Abbotsford. I'm the Curator of Historical Collections. Uh, welcome to another The Reach at Home, um, Caring for Family Treasures uh, Facebook Live event. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about paper and photographs. Um, we had some really good questions about this in the first segment, so I want to answer those today. But let's start with photographs. Um, and these are hard copy photographs. We'll deal electronic digital photographs are a whole other thing. Let's talk about hard copy prints. Um, prints are for storage. They're happy when you and I are. They like the same kind of humidity. They like the same kind of temperatures. Um, they are uh, composed of a paper layer and then a gel layer with chemicals in it. So if it gets a bit too humid, uh, that gel can soften. And so one of the questions was, why do I always frame my photographs with a mat? Well, that's because if you don't, and one of those events happens, the roof leaks, or you forget the pasta pot on the stove or something, that gel could soften and it will actually stick to the glass of the picture frame. So it's a good idea always to frame, especially heirloom photographs with a mat. It's even a better idea to get a print made of your heirloom photographs and display that instead. So when you're displaying photographs, they are subject to the same kind of damage from bright light that almost any organic matter is. Um, so they will bleach, they will color shift. So if you've seen those beautiful old silver brown sepia tone photographs, that's a result of light damage. Um, and it can quite be quite severe. Um, sometimes when you digitize them, you can bring that contrast and that detail back, but the damage to the original piece is done. So we want to try and prevent that when we're displaying them. So if you're displaying family photographs, it's better actually to get prints made, digitize them and prints made, and then safely store the original photographs. Um, the other thing about original photographs is that we've received a lot in the collection that have been um, information has been written on the back, which is great. That's great because then we know who it is, we know what it is. But if you're doing that, if you're collecting that information and you want to write it on the back of your photo, use a really, really soft kind of an artist pencil, you know, a four or a five or even a six B. They're really soft. You don't have to press hard. They won't damage, they won't like injure the front of the photograph by pressing too hard than an HB pencil will. So never, never use ballpoint. Ballpoint is a fugitive ink, so that'll actually bleed through the paper and into the, into the front of the photograph. So never use that. Um, it's better if you store your photographs in some kind of an enclosure. So I've got a couple to show you. When we store copy prints, we store them in beautiful acid-free envelopes like this. And then we can write all the information if we need to on the outside, such as the reference number. You'll notice when you go online and you look at the REACH uh, online photo archives, you'll see that everyone has a P number or an N number. That's their reference number. So all that material is computerized now. Um, but it's the reference number. So we write it on the envelope and we write it very carefully with a soft pencil on the back of the hard copy photograph. So that's how we store them. Um, but you can also store them in really uh, in these vinyl uh, sleeves. These print file ones are pretty good again with the brand names, you have to be pretty careful about the kinds of things you're storing your photographs in. Um, there's a lot of these old photograph albums. I've got a nice example here. They have the black, heavy black pages. And most of the time the photographs were attached in them with photo corners. Um, photo corners are an awesome product. You can use them to attach anything. And then you can remove the photograph and look at the information on the back. Um, if you tape them in, or uh, another big one for a while was contact cement them in, we can't get that information out. When you have to pull them off, it tears the, tears the paper and or the photograph. So it's better to have them be removable if you can from your album. Uh, the one album that I would tell you if you own them, because they were really popular for a while, is these magnetic albums. Well, they're not actually magnetic. Um, they have this... Um, sleeve here, this cover. So when you put photographs or anything into a plastic enclosure, you want to make sure that it's it's um, not polyvinyl chloride, which this almost certainly is because it's cheap. The plastics you, you should use are polyethylene, 
polypropylene and polyester. So there's three good polys and one really bad one. And I think the name polyvinyl chloride is, is the clue to that. Um, polyvinyl chloride gives off gases that will be really damaging to the negatives or to the photographs or to anything. Um, the other thing about these is that they have a, a wood fiber, a cellulose backing, and that's probably not very good quality either. That's probably pretty acidic, so that's not going to help. Um, and then being not magnetic, this is adhesive. These, the, whatever's making the page go stick like that, that's adhesive. And that will eventually become permanent. So if you've got photographs in these, take them out now while you can, because it's really hard to get them out. Um, really, really difficult. So not the best thing to use for your valued photographs. Um, and then, as I say, in the, in the vintage albums, they have here with the photo corners. And these are great because you can take them out. So always use them. Um, if you're a scrapbooker and you want to mount things, I have an example of that too. This one shows newspaper clippings. But it shows you what happens to tape over time. Tape is adhesive that is attached to mylar, paper, or plastic, whatever. And the adhesive will invariably um, break down and discolor. So we have some fabulous old um, um, scrapbooks like this. You open the pages, even carefully, and the tape flutters out like little butterflies. And then all the things fall out and there's left with big black big brown stains. So even when you go to copy them or scan them, those those discolorations are there. So tape's not the best thing to use. So uh, negatives, on the other hand, are not happy in the climate that we are. Negatives will quite happily live the whole life in a deep freeze. And that's the best place to store them is in some kind of cool, very dry storage area. So when you get them now, they come in a nice neg sleeve. So that's that's a good plastic. If you want to store them in that in a long term, that's great. Put them in an album. You can write the information on that neg sleeve in some kind of a um, an indelible marker so that the information is there about what's on it. Um, if you have really old negatives, it's almost better to store them in the freezer. So the way that you do that is you put them in some kind of a plastic enclosure to protect them so they're not abrading. Um, and then you put them in a really heavy um, uh, plastic Ziploc bag, write some information on that, like when you put them in, that kind of thing, and then put them in the deep freeze. And, you know, you can put them in a box so that they're protected from, say, the turkey. Um, and then if you want to get them out and use them, this is a, a process that you have to be a bit careful about. Uh, they like to warm up a little bit slowly. So if you want to, say, you know, get some prints made, plan this a few days ahead. Uh, get them out of the freezer, put them in their hard container in the fridge, let them warm up for a day or two, then take them out of that, let them warm up in the fridge a bit more, and then take them out and you can handle them. But uh, especially old films, nitrate-based films, have to be stored, stored in very, very, very cold temperatures. Uh, old nitrate films will actually catch fire uh, in the wrong storage conditions, um, and they'll all deteriorate. Um, so that's photographs. Um, talk a little bit about documents, you know, art on paper. Um, and this is all to do with the paper. Um, you can get really good quality rag paper. And if you have old documents, old papers, um, those are almost certainly made from rag paper. So rag paper is usually cotton. It's mechanically shredded and the paper is created. Um, and it's really stable. Good rag paper will last you know, 200 years at least, right? And longer, we know that. Um, whereas cellulose, which is a recent kind of a, uh, an invention, relatively recent, is made from wood. And wood is not white. So uh, one of the things that has to be done to it is that you have to um, bleach it to make it be white. And those chemicals, those bleaching chemicals, often stay in the paper. The other thing about uh, cellulose, about wood fiber, is that it contains lignin. And lignin is really important to trees. It's, it's a polymer that help, helps um, hold the capillaries, that feeds the tree, that helps the tree be rigid and upright. But it's really, really bad for paper. Um, and it can be removed. And again, it's a, a chemical process that leaves very often residue in the paper anyway. But what lignin does, 
is it tends to make paper go brown. So when, if you have uh, old newspaper clippings, family uh, history kinds of documents, um, important events, you want to really keep them out of the light, keep them cool. If you want to display old clippings or scrapbook them, it's very much uh, better to, co again, copy them and uh, display the copies. Uh, newspapers, I think you can tell this, if you see one, you know, on the street and it's a week old, you know, it's been tossed out, it's going to discolor. This one's from the 1940s. It's pretty good, but then it's been stored pretty flat most of its life, in the dark most of its life, and pretty cool. So it's better to treat those things that way. Uh, this is a good example, though, because it was folded at some time before it came to us, and it's splitting. Newspaper's not very strong. It's meant to be disposable, so it's not the best made. So if you've got uh, a scrapbook of clippings, you'll have to, you know, copy the clippings, use those, put the others away. Um, always when you're when you're dealing with paper you want to have clean hands and you look at me now i've got the colored nail polish if i'm working with collections i don't have that so when you're working with any of your documents or photographs you have a couple of choices you can wash your hands really well and make sure that you know you're not going to leave any residue on anything or you can use white cotton gloves you can use vinyl um, vinyl gloves medical gloves anything that'll help protect the photograph or the negative so Photographs, you always handle from the corners, edge to edge, between your fingers. Negatives, you try never to touch the image. And negatives also have an emulsion. Uh, one side is, is the plain plastic, and one side you can see is kind of matte, has a matte finish. That's the side the emulsion is on. So if you're letting that get scratched or abraded or rubbed, it's going to affect the print that you can make from that. So you want to be very careful about those. That's why it's better to so store them in a negative sleeve like the ones uh, the ones I showed you and protect them. Um, for documents, again, clean hands. Um, and when you can, store them in something rigid. So when we store documents or archival materials, we store them in, in file folders. These ones happen to be acid-free. Uh, regular file folders, folders are fine for most things, but you know, the unspoken thing um, that people understand when they donate something to us is that we will take care of it forever in perpetuity. And we try to do that. Um, so oh, acid-free file folders, and they come in a variety of sizes and they're easy to get online. Most of these supplies are really easy to get online. It's not, not a problem. And then we store uh, documents and photographs in a Hollinger box. And I've showed you these boxes before. They've got, they've got the reinforced corners. They're a heavy... Uh, thin cardboard um, and what we try to do is comfortably fill the box with the folder so you may not have Hollinger boxes although if you need one or two um, certainly we have those in stock at the reach and you can make a donation to cover the cost to those um, same with file folders I'm willing to help you out with that and actually help you with the process of, of moving things into safe storage um, I do want to have Abbotsford's history last into the future so that we can all learn from it and I'm happy to help you do that. Um, but if a file filing cabinet, um, if you happen to have a fireproof filing cabinet, obviously that's optimum um, because disasters do happen. It happened in my own family. We lost a lot of our family photos when my parents' house burned down. Um, so I'm really conscientious about that. If you can have a, a fireproof filing cabinet for your important documents, or a good stand, good quality filing cabinet, and they're on the top of the save list in case there's a fire. Um, not that I say you should run in and save your documents ever, um, but just really secure storage. Um, big things, I have a few big things, posters that I like and that kind of thing. And I store those in my china cabinet. So I've got these big drawers in my, in my buffet kind of sideboard thing, and I store them on the bottom under a piece of cardboard and so a couple of times a year when I go and get the good silver out and that kind of thing, I have the little check to see that everything's still fine because, you know, photographs and documents are, are uh, subject to pest damage. And we talked a little bit about pests last time, uh, about the little critters that get in and eat your documents. And that way I can check them and make sure that everything is fine. So 
inspection is important to make sure that if anything is impacting it, your documents or your photos, you stop it as soon as possible. It's when things get put away and not looked at for a long time that problems can really become unmanageable. So that was a really quick run through on photographs and documents and uh, I didn't see any questions. But um, if you do have any questions, um, I'm still here to help you. I am obviously working from my home, but kfolds at the reach.ca. Um, I'm happy to, to get an email from you. Uh, if you can leave me your question and your telephone number, and then I'll call you back and we can have a conversation about whatever it is that you're concerned about. Happy to help you with that. And for more of these amazing The Reach at Home programs, because we're trying to keep our exhibitions, our collections, um, such expertise as we have that uh, can be of value to our community accessible. So that's at www.thereach.ca. So there's lots of great stuff going on, education kits, uh, driving tours, lots of these kinds of videos about things. So have a check there. Uh, it's been nice to see, well, to see some people today. And I look forward to your questions. Have a great day. Bye. It was just out.